Hey guys, this is Tony from Historic Barbecue. Tonight, we're talking all about competition chicken legs on Stay Historic while staying at home. I'm gonna start with the final product. The lighting is way better outside, so I figured we'd come out here and, and look at them. Um, so this is our, I timed this just right. So these are just coming off the grill. Hopefully you can see the awesome color there. Kind of a mahogany uh, red, a little lighter than that. Um, that's exactly what we're going for. So, I just wanted you guys to see the final product before we uh, go inside and show you the whole process. So, let's get to work. She, she out of the way. So the first part, any competition, uh, step back a little bit because I know a lot of the people that have been watching all week are not competition people. So competition cooking is quite a bit different than the backyard stuff that we've been doing all week. Uh, we're really trying to impress these judges with uh, just one or two bites. Uh, you have six judges that you have to feed. Uh, they score you on taste, tenderness, and appearance. And those are weighted. Uh, taste is the most important. Appearance is the least Im uh, important uh, as far as the scoring goes. Um, but you're really just trying to impress these judges. So you're going to see a lot more detailed things here than what we've uh, done in the previous parts of the week. And every part of this process, you're trying to get them the perfect bite. And that starts from the meat you pick all the way to, all the, way to the end, to uh, which ones you decide to put in the box. So let's get to it. These are uh, chicken legs um, from Dorothy Lane Market, which is a, kind of a higher-end uh, supermarket around here. Uh, these are Bell & Evans Air Chilled Chicken. Um, I know a lot of people cook um, Springer Mountain. I've never cooked Springer Mountain legs. Uh, these are what work for me. Uh, I had to use a different brand one time this year, and that was the one time I didn't get a call. So that's what get I said. Get a call with. means. That means you place in the top 10. Mm -hmm. So I, I only did six competitions this past year, and five of the six um, I placed in chicken. So chicken was pretty good for me this past year. So I normally get by. Um, 25 or 30, depending on the size. If, if the 25 is a little light, then I'll get five more. Uh, chicken legs, and then I'm going to weigh each and every one of these pieces. My perfect size that I really want is going to be 130 grams. But the more important thing is that I'm getting two groups of eight, because I'm going to put them in a pan of eight, that are all as close as possible to each other. That way when they're cooking, they're going to finish at the same time. All of these were my rejects from the competition season that I put in the freezer. Um, so these are all closer to like 90 grams. So these are significantly smaller than what I would cook in a competition. Uh, but that 130 mark, or maybe a little bit lower, you can fit seven in the box, um, and that's that's what I'm going for. That makes the box full and it keeps the table cabin happy. Have you talked about boxes and turn-ins and all that? And what a box is? We, we, we can go through that as, okay. as we... We've got Melbourne, ready. Australia in the house. Awesome. Thanks Thanks for watching, guys, and thanks everyone that's been watching this whole week. Um, if you miss anything, I am going to um, share this recipe online, start to finish. If you go to historicbarbecue.com slash chicken, you can sign up to be emailed the recipe. I'm, I'm not going to have that out today, um, but I am going to have it in the next few days. Okay, so the first step, they've got this little kind of extra piece um, on the knuckle side. This, this is what I'm calling the knuckle. When I say knuckle up, I'll say that later. That's what I'm talking about, that piece right there. So I just kind of take my knife and it's cut the... fireboard temperature alert, by the way. That's fine. We're, we're okay. done cooking. All right, cool. Fireboard's my uh, remote monitoring. I, I don't have one of the Wi-Fi triggers yet, and uh, so I, I use the fireboard. So I'm just kind of taking this little piece off and going around the back a little bit. And what kind of knife are you using today? It's different than... So, yeah, this is the same style of knife. This is a semi-flexible. This one's a little bit stiffer than the other one. Um, bony knife. Um, this is my more uh, fancier. This is a shun. Um, it's real thin, and it's super sharp, and that's going to be important later. Hi, Mindy. Hi, Duke. Hey, huh. guys. Great math skills, say your parents. <laughs> My dad's a math teacher or was formerly a math teacher. So I'm just going to go through, and I'm, I might not go through and trim all these pieces because you guys are going to get bored, but just so you see the process. So you can see I'm just cutting um, that piece off, and that's actually going to be attached to the tendon that we're going to take off here in a minute. Tony's very OCD, so this is actually probably one of his most favorite things <laughs> because he has so much attention to detail. 
I don't know if I'd call Sherman chicken my favorite thing, but wow. uh, there is a reason. It's, very, it's precision. There is lots of precision involved, and you'll see that through the process. Um, so now on all these, and I kind of do these in phases. So I go through and I take the bottom off all these. And every step of the way, I'm thinking about what's that going to look like in the box. What's that gonna, like this one? I would stop right now, and I wouldn't even use it because it's got that chip on the end. So I would never want to put that in the box. So um, normally I would just throw that one away now or put it in the pile that gets thrown. Now was the, the skin way. like that to begin with, or did you yeah, do this something? Is a, nope, this is exactly that's how, how it comes. Is. Okay, how the skin comes. Um, if you really want, you can go through and try to clean these feet up, but I normally end up making it worse than better so um i wouldn't worry about too much like this one's got a lot of stuff so i would probably clean that up a little bit but yeah so yeah i just nick that one as part of the process so now i can't use that one but i do them in phases so i cut all the bottoms off and then i go on and do the next step so pull the skin back on all of these i'm breaking my no gloves rule again because it's chicken and i don't want to have to wash my hands 10 times during this just kind of using my thumb to get under there and pulling this all the way down. And would you say this is unconventional when you think about preparing chicken legs? How a I normal would, person would? Or a is this a traditional seasoning? Not, a normal person is not going to go through all this effort. I yeah. do season them under the skin if I'm cooking them at home just because you get extra flavor there. Uh, but I'm not going through and taking them. I this. personally had never seen anything like this before. And I think we've all figured out I come from a non- Bar competition barbecue background prior to Tony. Yeah, and this is, even though this looks like a lot of work, this is a lot easier than what a lot of people do for competition chicken thighs. I can't cook a thigh to save my life. I've been cooking this method of chicken leg or some form of chicken leg for at least five years, probably longer than that. And that's another interesting thing with chicken. I didn't know you can turn in... Yep, as long as it's any part. As long as it's six pieces for the judges, you so can you turn could do any part. Breasts, if you wanted, it'd be a little big, but is it, if it was sliced into sliced, six, yep. yeah, sliced breast. Okay, so now um, I'm going to go through and take these tendons off of each one of these. Um, I just sub I'm doing this subconsciously because I do this all the time. But um, I also check this top piece. Like this one doesn't have anything. This one has this little loose piece of bone so I just use the scissors to just snip that bone off but the tendon so this is actually this big tendon is actually attached or was attached to that piece we cut off the back so I'm just sliding my knife under there and this is why I like using a thin knife and then normally that'll pop out because we disconnected the other side and then I really care about the base more than anything but then I'm just kind of taking that off I know some people leave that on there. I I just I think it's safer to take it off. It only takes a few seconds. And then I do the other side. And this one you kind of got to cut at the bottom. So we just do that. I'm not going to go through and do this every time, but and again every time at every step of the way I'm looking if there's something wrong with this chicken if it feels these are all good sometimes we'll get one that's kind of like a grainy texture um, where you can feel the bones broken or there'll be discoloration throw it away you got um you got time to fix it now if you find a problem fix it that way you don't have to worry about it later talk through the timing element for people that don't do cops they um so at a kcbs competition that's the uh, sanctioning body that i always cook kansas city barbecue society you have to turn in chicken ribs pork and brisket so chicken is uh, typically at 12, um, ribs are at 12.30, pork is at 1, and brisket is at 1.30. And you've got a five-minute window on each side of that to turn in. Um, so you can turn chicken in as soon as um, 11.55, and you can uh, turn it as late in as 12.04.59. You, you don't have come miss that. close to that? I have come very close to that. Um, there's a video out there where I... Um, turned in my brisket box with approximately six seconds left. I think the description I was told was that uh, it left my the box left my hands with six seconds left and it hit the table with four seconds left because I was just rolling on through. But it made it and it scored well. So, so I typically people have all kinds of different theories about when you should turn it in. Um, I turn chicken in as close to the beginning of that as possible. 
Um, as soon, most reps, as soon as they get six boxes, those boxes are going to the judges. Um, so if I turn it in early, it's going to be one of the first boxes to hit hit a table, and hopefully get to them hot. And those judges have been sitting there, and they're, they're ready to taste barbecue, and they're excited. So I want to make sure that I can uh, take advantage of that excitement. Ron has a three second record. Three second. That's pretty good. I've 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 exceeded the limit one time, and I wish that upon no one. Um, I had a clock failure. Um, and we were just dilly-dallying our way up to the uh, turn-in table, and one of our friends who was not cooking um, asked us what we were doing. There was an explicitive involved in the middle of that sentence. Um, and we said, you know, we were just like, what are you talking about? He's like, you missed it. And, of course, we thought he was messing with us. And then they held the clock up, and we did, in fact, miss the turn-in. Um, and that very likely cost me a GC at that competition. GC equals? Grand champion. But it happens, you learn from it, and uh, don't let it happen again. Gene's pointing out that there is a large group tonight. Everyone's looking for the secrets. We've got 73 people, which is nice. about mm, three to four times more than, eh, maybe three times more than the average, I'd say. Okay, so we got all those trimmed up. So the next step, um, I'm looking at all these, and uh, the best description I can say for what I'm trying to do next is from my friends over at Al Alia. They describe this way. I want this to look like a cartoon chicken leg. Like when you've seen a cartoon when they hold up a chicken leg where it's almost perfectly round at the top, that's what I'm going for here. So I'm looking at the tops of these and they all of them have kind of like a little point they come to. So I'm just gonna use scissors and just kind of shape these a little bit. That's all there is to that. I'm just shaping that so that that gets rid of that hard edge. So we got one right here and I'm just kind of Snipping that. Uh, you don't want to take so much that you see the bone. Um, and that kind of, it still has a curve to it. I can't make the bone straight, but, but it just makes it so it's not quite as extreme. Um, it doesn't come to a point. If there's a real, none of these are like this. Sometimes you'll have one that kind of has, this one might do, a, none of these are a good example, but sometimes they'll have kind of a, a bulge that goes to the side since these are smaller. None of them are really doing that. But if they would, I just kind of push it together and, and trim it off. Um, you normally will see that with the bigger legs. Amanda says, thank you for being bored enough at home to do this. <laughs> Tony's never bored. I, I Tony always is always busy. scheming. Well, I enjoy cooking, and it seems like you guys enjoy watching these, so I'm having a good time doing them. And luckily, my camera person and uh, at-home co-worker here is gracious enough to help us with these. Okay. Do this one. Like I said, these are all pretty small, so I normally, these are about 50% smaller than I would normally do. We've got Nebraska, Oklahoma. I think there was another state that I missed. Obviously okay. Australia. So everybody wants to see this. Okay, these so secrets. these are all pretty good shape-wise. Tina's at, Tina Cannon's asking, do you weigh them? What size do you prefer? Yes, so you, I weigh them before trimming. 130 grams is my target. Maryland, another state. But um, my prefer, it's more importantly than the, the absolute weight is that I get eight that are, you know, as close together as possible so they all finish at the same time. So 130 grams are perfect, but if I've got eight that are 115 and that, or, you know, 120 to 130, and then I've got eight that are 130 to 138, um, then I'll group those all together so that those eight in the pan finish at the same time. That way I don't have to temperature it every one and you're not trying to take individual uh, legs off the cooker. We've got someone else from Australia. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Calgary, guys. Delaware. Somebody, Matt, Matt next says, I'm smoking these this weekend for dinner. Thanks for the step-by-step -step so my kids think I am a chef. <laughs> hey, we're all chefs. You just Sometimes uh, you got to learn along the way Virginia. and make a few mistakes. But... Um, so trimming wise, these are pretty much done. So I normally buy my chicken on Tuesday. North that's, Carolina. Uh, that's when Dorothy Lane Market gets them in stock. So I, I actually call ahead and they have them um, pre-picked out for me. They give me the big ones out of the case. Um, I'm going to stop naming states and just say we've got a lot of states. <laughs> so I, I normally buy them on Tuesday. I try to trim them on Tuesday or Wednesday night. Um, and at this point, uh, they would go into a vacuum bag. I put them in two different bags. I label them with the weights. I record the way it's probably the my most important number one tip uh, for competition barbecue. I don't have it here, um, but take lots of notes. I literally have 
all these notes on how to cook chicken. Um, Where's the rocket book? The rocket book, I, I was looking at it earlier to make sure I wasn't um, lying to people when I was telling them my method. But I use a rocket book. You, it's uh, reusable, so you can write your notes and then take a picture and it uploads them to um, Dropbox or OneDrive or wherever you want them to go. Except for when you left it in a hot car yeah, and it they do. It will erase itself if it gets too hot. But then you throw it in the freezer and it comes back. It's kind of cool. But so at this point, I would have my 16 legs. I'd put them in a bag. I'd vacuum seal them. And I'd put them in the fridge. If I was traveling a long way um, and those were going to be in a camera or a cooler for a long time, I wouldn't be afraid to freeze them. Um, and if I manage to get more than 16 good legs out of a batch, if I can get an extra eight out of a set, I won't have any hesitation to trim those up, freeze them, th that way that I've got them ready for a future date. So, uh, Our friend Dan is asking, what is the preferred cocktail during a competition? Asking for we're, a friend. We're getting there. Don't okay. worry. That's, that's in the works. Uh, um, Emmeline saying, do you trim the chicken before the comp or when you get to the comp? I always trim chicken ahead of time. Um, there's very, unless there's some crazy circumstance, I trim all of my meat ahead of time. Uh, the main reason for that is that if something's wrong with the meat, I have a chance to fix it. So if I were to go buy a 25 legs and all 25 were 80 grams, I can go to a different store and I can try to get different chicken and I can try to fix it. If I get to the competition and I trim it, my options to fix that are way, way less. So. Teresa Bell, yes, you can rewind once we post this to the Facebook page. You can just watch it like a normal video. So you, yep. anybody can watch all these top secret tips over and over yep. and so over again. So the video we post on Facebook after this is done. If you sign up on historicbarbecue.com slash chicken, I'll give you a PDF version. And I'm also going to try to get it on YouTube. Oh, Dan's answering his own question and saying Bloody Mary. <laughs> it depends on the time of day. Bloody Mary is the morning. So... So um, I've got this trimmed, I'm at the competition. Um, so these are ready to, to, to start the actual process. So I rub, um, I think this is probably one of the most important steps of this process. Uh, on Friday night, competitions are normally Friday and Saturday, so your turn-ins are Saturday afternoon. Um, I'm gonna rub these at about 10.30 or 11 o'clock. Uh, look at my official uh, timeline here. This is just my chicken timeline. I've got a whole big thing. Oh, it's like yep. a zooming in. Yeah, normally you have to get me uh, pretty drunk on a Thursday night to show you this stuff. But, you know, I guess uh, a virus will get get the uh, best information out of me. So, um, between 10 and 11 um, is when I'm, I start the rub process on these. So, the first thing I do is our friend Accent MSG. Um, so, I'm going to hit um, under the skin, light MSG on all these. Captain Ron's coffee was also suggested. Captain Ron's coffee is pretty good. I haven't seen Captain Ron around in a while. I haven't, I've been staying a little bit um, more close to the Ohio area. So. so just a real light coat. Um, we're gonna let these set for just a few minutes. Um, the uh, Historic Barbecue Red does not have MSG in it, all natural. Or no artificial anything. So to be able to put that on the label, I cannot put MSG in it. So did you already go over the benefit of the MSG? What does it do? Um, it just makes things kind of pop. It takes a little more umami, a little. Uh, it's not really salt. It's just a, like a flavor enhancer. I think mm -hmm. that's exactly what wakes food up. There you go, flavor mm -hmm. enhancer. I I read the label without knowing it. So then we've got our super secret rub combo that is the best not be a secret. So. I do all my rubs for all my meats by weight. So 100 grams of Cimarron Docks, 25 grams of Wet the Clock. Um, I, the main reason I use the Wet the Clock for chicken is it's got some citric acid in there. Um, I think that makes a big difference. So that's, if you don't have Wet the Clock, um, I think like Luton Booty has got some um, citric acid in there. Um, I know Harry Sue's Chicken Rub's got some citric acid in there. So those are, um, I think the citric acid is the main element that I'm getting out of that. And then 25 grams of Historic Barbecue Red. I've tried lots of different uh, rub combinations on chicken. Uh, I think you really need to be careful with heat. Um, if you, I used to use a little bit spicier rub combination on chicken, and it would be either all nines or all sixes and sevens. Like That is a very fine line there on the heat sensitivity on chicken and the same thing on your sauce. So I take all those, I put them in a grinder. Now this is actually a little finer than I wanted it to be. Um, just like four or five pulses. I just wanted to, this is, this is too fine. I did a little too much. 
um, but I just don't want it to be grainy. Um, I just So just four or five quick pulses to kind of break it up and get it a little finer. Um, and I normally use a shaker with pretty small holes. This is a little bigger than normal. And I'm just gonna lightly rub all these. Probably less rub than you would think. And you can, I've kind of posted pictures before this online and people have kind of commented on that. So again, this is the night before that I'm doing this. I think that's one of the keys to the way the skin ends up rendering out. Um, kind of the salt and the rub is gonna um, absorb into that skin. And um, so I, after I rub these, I'm gonna pull this skin back up and it goes into a refrigerator or a Cambro. Um, and I actually have a commercial refrigerator on my uh, trailer because it's a, a vending trailer. Um, so there's tons of air movement in there. If you're using like an RV fridge or you got it in a cold Cambro, you're gonna wanna use like a, probably two of those little RV fans because um, you really want the air movement. And um, this is kind of like a, if you've ever um, put a, a turkey in the fridge uncovered overnight to, to dry the skin out, same exact theory behind it. We're trying to get this skin um, dried out. And the salt Good the point room. from Jeff. He says judges in the north don't care for the heat much. It's super regionalized. Like yeah. where you're going. So that's, a, that's a good question. So some of the, I know some people that kind of change things depending on where they go. Um, but a lot of the, the biggest cooks that, you know, travel all around the country, um, they score well at wherever they go. And most of them claim that they don't change their recipes. Uh, so I don't change anything depending on where I go. So that's our mm. process. So you don't have to scrape the skin. I don't, a lot of people will jacquard it. They'll take a, a meat tenderizer and they'll go through and punch a bunch of holes in that. I don't do any of that stuff. If you also notice, I did not talk about brining or injecting these. I do not brine or inject my chicken legs. Um, I've tried it before, um, and I don't know if it's just this brand of chicken or this process, uh, but it just, it doesn't work for me. I think the texture gets too mushy. Um, and I've tried a few different injections um, and, and brines, and it just, for my process, I just prefer to, to not do that. So we're just gonna. Tony, what was the uh, first meal that you made for the camera lady at home? It was these exact competition chicken legs. How did that work out for you? It worked out pretty well. Yeah. Very well. He also had them on trays with butcher paper. craft paper or butcher paper on them. I was very impressed. What brand do you buy? I may have missed that. Uh, these are Bell and Evans. Um, there's a grocery store near me that carries that. Um, I've never, I know the um, uh, Springer Mountain Farms is a popular one. I've never cooked them, so I can't vouch for them, but I know those are also popular. Uh, I will tell you the one time I, this year that I did not cook Bell and Ovens, I cooked like the Simply Truth um, Kroger. I think it was, they have two different ones, a green one and a brown label. It was the brown label. I know other people that have success with those, those did not work well for me, so you're got to be careful that if you t if you take parts of this process uh, make sure you test it and, and it, it works in your system so these are going into normally i would have eight these are smaller so i ended up actually cooking fitting 10 in a pan on the other one that's why i'm short here i didn't want to thaw a whole nother batch so these are going into a half pan um and however i and this is what's going to go in the fridge just like this however i sit this piece of chicken in here is how it's going to look in the box because it's gonna kind of firm up overnight in the fridge. Um, the skin's gonna settle in and almost kind of like adhere to the chicken. So however you put it in this pan is how it's gonna look. Um, so it's really important that you get these exactly how you want them. Um, normally uh, with the 130 gram size, you can get all eight in here without them touching. Um, I actually fit 10 of this size in here. But you know, if they're kind of sideways, like sometimes they'll kind of want to sit funny, you're gonna want them to get them as to sit exactly how you're gonna want them in the box. There's a comment that you have the sexiest legs in barbecue. <laughs> well, you know, thank you. That's from Sean. So these are gonna go into the fridge just like this. They'll be eight in here, obviously. And overnight, and this skin is almost gonna look transparent after that happens. I didn't have enough extra to, to actually show you what that looks like. Uh, but the skin's gonna dry out. It's gonna be nearly transparent, and the shape that you have here, I got a big old piece of bone, is gonna be exactly 
So like uh, this piece of skin right here is kind of bunched up, so I would use tweezers or a knife to flatten it out. And I always cook them knuckle up because I want them in the box to all look exactly the same. I know some people end up having them you know, on their side, which what I would call is the side. Um, you know, every which direction. And to me, that just, I'm, that's where the OCD part comes in. I need them all to look the same. If I'm really lucky, I'll get eight that all turn the same direction or four and four. That, that way when they go in the box, um, they're all going to fit, fit together. So flat, fast forward till the morning. Um, I, I'm a low and slow guy, so my big meat's go on at 11, and I'm waking up about 6 o'clock to wrap them. So right after that's done, after I wrap my big meats in the morning, that's when I'm going to rub the outside. Um, so the outside's going to be dry now, and I guess I already touched this rub with dirty hands, so I'm going to do it again. Um, and say, about the same amount on the outside. Just a light coating, and I just kind of roll it in my hand as I do it, making sure I get the entire, make sure you get even down by the base, because the, the color will be different if you don't get it all. Like what happens if you don't refrigerate them in between? Would you not recommend? I don't think the skin is going to render the same. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to be, uh, you're going to be risking the, the quality of that skin. The, mm -hmm. the goal is to have bite through skin. They almost want it so that they can't tell that it's there. Um, so I think that drawing that out just really makes it um, a what lot more What if you're just sitting at home with your family? Still uh, not going to? I, th I mean, I, I'm going to probably put these on the smoker in a few minutes. Yeah, when we're so, done, so. yeah. Um, OCD equals obsessive chicken disorder. <laughs> hey, whatever, whatever it takes to make those six random strangers happy. Talk about the judges and the selection and how you can... Yeah, so to become a barbecue judge, um, you basically just have to pay KCBS $75 and take a barbecue class, um, a judging class. And that class is... Um, primarily for um, the rules so that you know that you're not allowed to use cilantro or you know, you're not allowed to use red leaf lettuce or that there has to be six pieces in the box. Um, they're not really teaching what flavors to expect. Um, so really the key to scoring well, um, at least in my opinion and, and lots of other people's opinion, is to not offend anyone. So they drop the lowest score. Um, so I guess you can offend one person if you really want to. Um, but there's a good chance that one of those judges at the table is going to be a little more particular than the other ones. Um, so really the goal is not to offend it, ever, anyone. Not too spicy, not too salty, um, not too sweet. Uh, just kind of... Dare you middle say of a little more on the bland side? Yes, I think you can be too flavorful. And I, I've kind of backed off on everything in the past year or so, and I think that has helped me um, score better overall. Thank you, Tina. Uh, she says your camera slash interviewer is really fantastic. <laughs> I would agree. She yeah. happens to be a communications professional, so, you know. Director of barbecue marketing. Tony Cooks, I help direct. Okay, so now. Oh, cilantro is allowed, it, Teresa is Bell says. She is correct. As soon as I said that, I knew someone was going to correct me. Uh, the red leaf the lettuce is not. Mark the kidding. rub recipe. Uh, if you just if you just check out this video afterward, he went through everything that's in his in his super secret rub. 100 it's grams of Cimarron Dox, 25 grams of What the Cluck, 25 grams of Historic Rub. And there you go. So now, uh, so this goes back in the fridge at 6:30 after they're both rubbed. Um, and I normally, since we're, we're normally doing 16, I'll do all of one eight, I'll do the next eight, and then I'll put them back in the order that I rub them. That way they've kind of all had the same amount of time to um, kind of sweat out. So now, back to our fancy timeline. Um, at 6, or not 6.15, 9.15, um, no one's going to go sign up to download it if I, you give it to everyone for free. Um, so at 9.15... I'm gonna put one stick of butter in the pan. Um, and I just kind of put these in between here. This is a half stick, but you get the idea. Um, another method you can do is to melt this butter in the pan ahead of time and then put the pan in the fridge so that you kind of have a layer of butter. Uh, the advantage of that is um, if you're doing it like this, you gotta be careful that you're not touching the chicken because then it'll leave a spot. Um, so the melting the butter in the pan is a, a pretty good method if you, if you have the fridge space to do it. Um, I use Challenger butter. Um, I know some people use some of the higher butter fat content stuff like uh, Kerrygold, which is actually 
higher butter fat and grass fed, so it's got a distinct flavor. Some of the baking butters have higher butter fat, but Challenger is what I normally use. I don't know that it makes that much of a difference, but um, that's what I do. So we put our full stick of butter in there, and then our uh, barbecue lubricant at the uh, spray butter. Can't believe it's not butter. You also need a spray butter sponsor, an mm. aluminum foil sponsor and a spray butter. The problem with that is everyone uses it, so there's no reason that they need anyone to That's promote true. it. That's well, true. So aluminum I've... foil is also not exactly, you know, a <laughs> niche product. <laughs> you gotta get the heavy duty stuff though. Okay, so I cut those pretty good. And again, this would be a full pan and I'm making sure that I get both, all the sides. Um, so this is gonna go on uh, the smoker at uh, 915. Uh, depends on your cooker. The, uh, every cooker cooks different. Um, I'm, I do them between 275 and 300. Um, like here at home, I'm using a uh, Traeger Pro 34. I cook that at 300. Uh, the Traeger Timberline's what I have on the trailer. That cooks a little bit quicker because there's more convection. Um, so instead of changing the timeline, I, I dial the temperature down a little bit. So those are, I do it at 275. So something else happens in the nine o'clock hour. It is correct. In this barbecue. Is, I had an idea else. that this it was. Happened. So now we're, we've got those on the smoker. It's nine. I didn't even know this. It is now 922. So we have to have a good luck shot. I saw there's been some uh, virtual 922 shots. I'm not sure that how my uh, employer would like it if I was doing shots at 922 in the morning, but. We'll pretend like it's 922. So we got some uh, Weller here. And we're gonna half stick on. of butter for eight thighs. Uh, it? The I did a half stick just for my example. When I'm cooking at a competition, when there's eight in that pan, I'm using a full stick. Full stick per pan. Gotcha. You're getting a lot of hearts and likes <laughs> at the shot part. Well, this is a uh, good luck. Uh, hopefully, they call her name last. Since I'm the judge today, I'm gonna just go ahead and give it triple nines now. Woo! I haven't used the uh, official barbecue shot glass. So I'm gonna get this dirty stuff out of the way. Virtual 922 tomorrow night. It's being suggested. We might go to make that happen. So after the first, I'm gonna get my cheat sheet to make sure I'm not lying to you. After 45 minutes, um, I'm going to spray butter those every 20 minutes. So it's starting at 10 o'clock, spray butter. Um, how heavy you do the spray butter is kind of going to depend a little bit on your smoker. Every time you spray butter, it's going to start to slow it down a little bit because you're adding moisture to the surface. Spray butter is probably colder than the inside of your smoker. Um, and I think that part is very important too. If you miss one of those 20 minute marks, that you're going to be able to tell instantly. That skin is going to get kind of like wrinkly and almost scaly looking at that point you there's nothing you can do you can try to add more spray butter and make it heavier um, but if you miss one of those or you're doing the 922 shot and you try to walk around and tell everyone good luck and you come out of the trailer and it's too late this may be from personal experience <laughs> you uh you're you probably blew it <laughs> but every 20 minutes with the spray butter <laughs> dean says do you need a judge just leave them in your mailbox <laughs> That's good. The contact free transfer. KCBS has the virtual 922 tomorrow night on their page. Oh, nice. Ron's saying. And uh, Don is suggesting Jaeger instead of <laughs> the bourbon. Normally it's bourbon. Sometimes it's fireball. Occasionally it's jello shots. Sometimes there's a little bit of both. If you got different groups of friends, you end up doing multiple 922 shots. You want to avoid that if you can. So, anyway, back to what we were talking about. So the entire time I've got those on the cooker, I've got them probed. Um, so I use a ThermoQ, um, which is one of the higher end uh, Thermoworks products, and they have these really tiny probes. Um, so you can go right through the skin and it's not gonna leave a mark, um, super accurate. Um, so that, that's what I use to monitor the temperature the entire time. And you can uh, close the lid of the trigger on it, yeah, no it's, problem. Yeah, they're super thin, these wires are really durable. I've really had really good luck with these probes. Over several years, I think I've had to replace one of them. Um, Peanut butter whiskey was another suggestion. Ooh. Very good. So, spray butter every 20 minutes. And our final temperature that we're looking for is 191. 191, 192. Uh, my goal is to never cover those. Um, I track all this stuff and I log all my temperatures. And I figured out about three or four years ago, the longer, I used to cover them for the last like 20 minutes. 
Um, there was a direct correlation between the amount of time I covered them and the lower the score. Um, and there was like a threshold of like 13 minutes. Every time I covered it less than 13 minutes, it scored way higher. Um, so I adjusted my timeline so that I would never have to cover it. If you're running behind, if you're getting close to that, um, so at like 11, 20, 11, 30, they're not done or they're way behind. You can cover it if you have to, try to avoid it. Um, I mean, you don't want to turn in raw chicken, so that's, that's bad. But if you can avoid it, try not to cover it. So about 11, 36, about. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> that's when they should be done. Um, and I'm gonna take those out of, those, out of that pan and put it on a baking rack. So when the camera woman came to her first competition, she was like, wow, <laughs> there's a lot going on here. So these are going to come out of the pan. These have been sitting for a while, so I don't know if the color's going to be right. And yeah, it's kind of dolled up a little bit. So they're going to come out of the butter. That one's dried off a little bit. Normally they're pretty wet when they come out of the butter. So I take all eight of them. I'm about to ruin my table, but that's okay. And I put them on the baking rack um, and I try to dry them for about five minutes. Um, so they go into the baking rack, I dry them for five minutes, and then they come out and you can kind of tell the difference between those two. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but this one's like, you know, after the five minutes, you're going to be able to touch it and it's not going to rub around. Um, before that, it's kind of a lot softer. If you're running behind, and you absolutely have to. Um, this is the one step that you can skip. If they're undercooked, um, I'd rather you take them to temperature than do this step. So if you need the extra five minutes, use it and get them to temperature. Um, you can skip this step, um, but if you can, you obviously want to do it. So drying out the outside, the big, the biggest part of that is it's going to make the sauce stick better. I'm going to have to steal them. I agree, Aunt Mary. It's very complicated. So just what I was thinking, way too complicated. <laughs> Barbecue this on is, steroids, yes. Exactly. This is, what, did you, what do you call it, the fastest two hours fastest in? Fastest two hours in sports. Yeah. So, um, and this is about when that, that two hours starts. Um, so this one's got the butter on it. We'll see if it. Whoa. If, uh, with the, when you still have the butter on the outside, the sauce doesn't stick as well. Uh, but I've got a solo cup with my sauce here. Sauce is one cup of Craig's. One cup of uh, Blues Hog Original. One cup of sweet zing and then two ounces of honey um, the two types of honey i use are either a laney um, thistle honey which is really good but it's also really expensive this is just walmart honey and i've actually had really good luck with this so that's that's the honey choices um, so after your five minutes they're going to be dry um, and it, during that process just to kind of step back when i'm putting these on the rack I'm sorting them, and I, at that point, I've basically picked the six that I'm going to put. I try to do six from the same pan, so we'll have our two rows of eight here, one of the you know the, that are grouped by size. Um, and I'm going to put the best six from each of those on one side of this rack. Um, like these are the two worst ones from that pan. Um, these are the only two that popped, um, and that's kind of the indication that hey, this this pan's done. Um, so once you start to get pops, you really got to keep an eye on them because you don't want them all to do that. Question is, uh, do you strain the sauce? I do not. Um, so we'll see if we get any of that. 43rd parallel barbecue is asking that. I do not strain it. So when I dip it in here, um, so this is, I warm this up. Um, I have all my sauces in squeeze bottles uh, for all, I don't put sauce and brisket, but the other three categories are all in a squeeze bottle. Um, I put that squeeze bottle in a crock pot of warm water. I put that in the morning and then I have to worry about the sauce the rest of the day. So the sauce is warm, but not hot. And then I don't have any danglies in here, but um, sometimes that blues hog, you'll get some of those big like all spices or whatever. Um, like here's one right here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so I'll use tweezers to pick those off instead of straining it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you heat the sauce, if so, to a particular temperature? So you're just talking about the crock pot. Yeah, do you so have I, the crock pot on a certain setting? or? Um, I think I normally have it on high. So I just have them in. Squeeze bottles, I don't have one. So I'd say that they're time. they're fairly warm. I've I've cleaned that crock pot and wiped those bottles plenty of times to tell you that yeah, it's not gonna not... burn you, but it's not lukewarm. Yeah. So I'm just going through it and you wanna make sure you're don't touch the sides, you wanna go straight down. Um, I'll do that one more time. And my mine a little low here, but normally that would be completely submerged. So that's our sauced 
leg, and then oh, that's got my rib recipe written on the side, so I'll cover that up. Then I've got my finishing rub. This one is ground as fine as possible. Um, this is going to be three tablespoons of historic red, um, a teaspoon or so of smoking guns hot, and half a teaspoon of MSG. And then um, normally I've got a, a shaker that's got a real fine mesh top, and you're just going to do a real light on top. Uh, well, you want to do this right after it's sauced so that it'll kind of melt in there. And then these are going to go back on the cooker for about five minutes. So if you time that right and the timeline worked out, um, it should be about 11.50 now. Uh, so you've got five minutes to get these into the box. Normally you can get, you should be able to, these are again, pre-sorted. So hopefully I've got six good ones on you know my big pan, six good ones for my little pan. Um, so then the ones that are you know my rejects, um, I'm gonna use those as tasters. So I'll taste one from the big pack, one from the little pack, decide which row I'm gonna go with and just put those in the box. If I can, I'm gonna put seven in the box um, to make it look full, keep the, the table captain happy. If they're too big to fit seven, I'm just gonna put six in there, but I, I try to get seven. Depends a lot on the box. And um, as far as the box go, I use kale. I try to make my chicken box the lowest box because uh, you don't want the top to touch the, the chicken and, and leave a spot. Uh, but yeah, so these are going to go on for about five minutes. It's going to be uh, hopefully coming off at 11.50 in the box to the judges. So that's my uh, tell-all chicken. Any questions? I think we've got any last questions. We've got a lot more folks here. Beautiful color. Um, yeah. Yeah, one thing to consider, like outside you might have thought those looked a little light. A lot of those judging tents are pretty dark. So if you're turning in a dark product and they're looking at them in a dark room, they're gonna look a lot darker. Like the lighting in here is pretty pretty bad, uh, and these still look, look pretty good. So these might trend towards the, what people would consider the light side, but you have gotta consider the, you know, how the, think of it like a judge. How are they gonna um, look at it? What conditions are they gonna look at it? Um, when are they gonna eat it? So if you turn those in sooner and it's going straight to the judges, hopefully it's still warm. If it's sitting there for a while and it gets colder, um, you know, is that still going to be a good product? But cook it to temp, you know, season it well, get some good sauce on there, and hopefully the, the judges will all be on your side. Awesome. Lots of thanks. Lots of good job, Tony. We'll be back. Yep, so we, our uh, stay-at-home yeah, order got extended. Yeah, what's the agenda? Yep, our, our uh, the, you know, situation that we're in kind of sucks. Um, you know, hopefully everyone's staying home, staying safe. Um, I know it's uh, starting to hit. Uh, there's some barbecue people. Um, I know there's someone that, I'm not going to say any names, but there's a barbecue person that's heavily involved in OBR um, that unfortunately his brother had um, coronavirus and did not end well for him. Um, I know I've got a friend whose uncle just tested positive. Um, so ho hopefully everyone's staying safe and um, we're going to keep doing this. So Ohio stayed home orders until May 1st. So I got two more weeks. Next week, I think we're going to do uh, brisket chili, maybe some tacos, some wings. And it uh, seems like these competition ones are pretty popular. So I think on Friday next week, I'm going to do my competition steak recipe. Okay, we've got some last questions that are awesome. flying in. Do the chickens have talons? Um, they probably do. That would be the part that we're not uh, cooking here. Okay. <laughs> have you tried the Wesu all-purpose rub? I have not. What type of wood? Um, so uh, competitions in the Traegers, I'm doing a mix of 50-50 of cherry and pecan. Um, I just really like the smell and the taste the pecan gives you, and the cherry gives you a really good flavor. You put the squeeze bottles in a crock, yes. Yep, the squeeze bottles, uh, squeeze bottles go. I, don't, I, I clean the kitchen. Uh, it's out in the there. garage, yeah, I think. It's been sitting there for weeks. But the MS it's like a medium size, like mm -hmm. um, probably. It's a four, smaller four, one. Yeah, it's not like with the big oval it's one. Not it's, like a, it's not like a um, potluck it's, crock pot. It's like just big enough to fit. Um, these aren't the squeeze bottles I use, but they're, it's about the same size. I use like the first in like Subway style squeeze bottles, and I can just fit mm -hmm. um, the three, three bottles. The in. MSG is accent, correct? Not Japanese. Correct, accent. Um, watching this made me a better judge. Thank oh. you, Darren. Um, wood, fla wood flavor. So we talked about that. You have any plans for other live broadcasts? Yes, we yep, talked about every, that. Every night, six fifteen. Here's to staying positive and testing negative. No, I like that. I'm definitely stealing that. Very good. That's 43rd Parallel Barbecue. 
Uh, winning cocktail, have you tried? Okay. What is your most embarrassing moment in competition? Embarrassing moment. Duke missing, Breyer is asking this. Missing uh, brisket turn-in was certainly a bad moment. Um, probably getting a, a little too, having too much fun in the competition is not necessarily embarrassing, but it's, it's disappointing you put all that work into it. And sometimes you get a little carried away on Thursday night and that can leak into Friday. Um, but that's okay if you're having fun. I do this for fun, so I, I go out there every time and I want to win, but as long as I'm there and I'm having fun with most barbecue people, awesome people, so um, I used to get really pissed off at the end of the day and the judges, uh, but then I realized that every Sunday, you know, I'd be like, Saturday I'd look at those score sheets and I'd throw them away and I'd get pissed at the judge that gave me a seven and a comment card that said my brisket tastes like beef, which brisket's beef, so, um, but then on Sunday, I'm like, okay, when's the next one? So might as well just skip that pissed off section and just enjoy it, enjoy it while you're there. Uh, Mark, we keep for you. What temp did you bring them to? Uh, 191. I will, um, as long as they're above like 185, 186, I'm okay with it. If I'm running behind and they're, you know, 185, 186 in the upper 180s, I won't cover them. If they're below that, then I, I got to cover them. Uh, but I'd rather turn them in a couple degrees below 191 and not cover it. Then, um, then cover it just to get the last couple of degrees. Best moment in competition. Someone, I don't know if it was a question or a statement, but. Um, best moment in competition barbecue would have to either be my first GC, which is in Franklin. Um, that was pretty awesome. Everyone's first GC is always awesome. Um, and then last year, my last competition, um, I got GC in Nelsonville. I won the state competition on Friday night, and then I won the KCBS competition on Saturday night and that has been a very elusive competition for me. I've been very close to winning that thing so many times. I think I've gotten reserved there like three times um, and it was just I, fi I finally nailed it last year. Which you was, got a lot of boots. You got a lot of boots yeah, in the I've storage got, unit. I've got all kinds of boots on trophies. They've got probably the coolest trophies in competition barbecue. They have uh, boots on top of them so. All right. Got them all covered. How was bite through skin? Oh. Well, I'm just sitting here for a minute. They're cold. It's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Pretty juicy. Not quite as thinner as I wanted, but these have been sitting out. For these are the, see, we've only got forty-seven now. These are the these are the diehards. Yeah. What time is it? So yeah, those have been sitting for almost an hour. So, um, it's still pretty juicy. Not quite as thinner as I'd want, but they're probably better. Forty-five minutes ago, but. All, all right, good. we gotta eat, guys. We'll see you next week. Yep, so if anyone has any questions I didn't answer, I'm going to eat with my mouth, or talk with my mouth for you. Uh, just comment on this post, shoot me a message if you don't want to ask it on there. And uh, like I said, storebarbecue.com slash chicken if you want to email a copy of this. And I'm going to do, it's going to take me a couple days, I'm going to put pictures together and give you the timeline and everything. So, storebarbecue.com slash chicken. And uh, we'll be back on Monday, uh, probably doing brisket chili. Uh, so, stay a stork, stay at home.